Um, hello everyone, it's uh, very nice to be here. A few familiar faces in the audience. Um, I am a learning designer, e-learning designer, at the Australian Film, Television and Radio School, also known as AFTERS. And hang on, I'm just a bit disoriented, I don't know where to look. Um, here's some background and context. So the school was founded in 1973 and they run courses in film, TV, radio and increasingly other offerings such as digital media, um, uh, communication, storytelling, creativity, that sort of thing. Um, it's primarily on-campus delivery and that's significant in terms of the learning design. Um, they have very close industry links as well, so that's also um, an important factor with the learning design. Um, they haven't been using Moodle for all that long, um, and there's significantly, there's two types of courses. What we call the award courses, which is like bachelor or a master's. I'm in the short courses area. So these are non-award courses, and they're, um, they're traditionally on campus, but increasingly becoming blended or online as well. And then we've got uh, part of those short courses, um, or there's a, a, an alternate offering called industry certificates. They're a little bit more vocationally um, structured. So this is essentially a recount of the last, say, six months, developing a course called Digital Producer. And it Traditionally, it was delivered on campus as a five-day intensive, and um, it's designed to develop the skills of a digital producer. So it's not a hands-on digital uh, technical course. It's more about coordinating um, staff to get jobs done, maybe in app, an app development project or something like that. Um, so this is the situation where there was a five-day intensive course that was on campus face-to-face -face, and they wanted to transform it into a 12-week Moodle um, course, which was blended. So it was never going to be um, entirely online. Um, and so just with that transition, all of a sudden there's lots of different, um, d lots of additional content and lots of additional people coming in. Hello. Um, so that was the, the task, essentially. So, it was pretty much myself, who's the learning designer, with my little emoji, and a subject matter expert. And so we also had other things such as a schedule. We knew our LMS was Moodle. We had a very strict time frame. Um, there's some of my list of things to do. So I arrived on the project in late 2018, and we had to launch in February. And so we didn't really have a Moodle um, course. So luckily Moodle's very, as you would know, it's very um, quick to develop. It's really great for rapid course development. We had a course outline which was significant that was in draft form. So we weren't starting from absolute scratch. And as lots of you would know in the room, we had a big pile of content from the subject matter expert who was a digital producer from, from the industry, from the field. And so, thing, list of things to do, um, analyse, design and develop, it's pretty much repeating those things. And so, because we had the launch in February, um, we, there was an inherent risk when we're offering a course that hasn't actually been fully developed. And so, we just had to be very well organised, very professional in our processes, get all of our uh, protocols and communication and plans pretty much in place so that um, the course could go through its, uh, be launched and, and be delivered effectively. So we have, um, we used a couple of development model models. I'm not gonna go into all the detail. Um, I dare say most of the learning designers in the room would be familiar with the ADDI development model, but also SAM1 and SAM2. Essentially, there's lots of little um, iterations. So analyse, design, develop, multiply that pretty much e each and every day. And th there's content development in that cycle as well. So some of the issues and challenges, I already mentioned a very tight development schedule. 
we had to also decide what were the face-to-face -face, uh, components, what were the online components. Uh, we had a lot of existing assets, but there were also assets yet to be developed. Um, central to the whole process, of course, is learning the learning needs. Um, I tend to shy away from the P word, pedagogy. I, I tend to use learning and teaching as a phrase, but I mean, that's so inherent and so built into the process, it becomes invisible, I find. And it's really difficult to kind of get people up to speed with what you're meaning sometimes if they're a content matter, a subject matter expert or a content expert. Um, and also tasks and workflows. That's a screenshot of our Moodle course. Uh, this is an overview of rapid course development. So we had a version one, version two, version three, more than three versions, but there's a emotional ups and downs. But we did arrive with one that we liked. And again, this big pile of content was all also present. So we decided to develop a sample topic. So that was negotiated. I think it might have been apps and games was the topic. And so we agreed to that. Uh, came up with one that we liked, one module, if you like, or, or topic, and then we repeated that process through the remainder. Um, regular communication is really, really crucial. Um, and also, just checking what Moodle, Moodle tools we would be using. So that first kind of November and December were pretty frenzied in that regard. Um, I already mentioned iterative content and course development. And we, we were really keen on getting an ideal balance of the face-to-face -face components with the online components. So there's our tutor, Kate. So as the learning um, designer, Kate and I developed a very close working relationship, which was really um, crucial to the process because we just needed to negotiate everything. Um, the tasks, who was doing what, when would this be developed, who was doing whatever inside Moodle, inside Word documents, inside other um, areas. Uh, again, because it was all part of a very rapid iterative Moodle course development. So what kind of tools did we use? I did explore a whole heap of H5P and they kind of, they do take time to develop and I just didn't want to start unpicking stuff and so we, we went pretty conservatively. I don't know if people are familiar with the book, the famous book tool. I understand it's been a little bit overlooked um, in, in recent times, but I really like it because it's very simple. It allows you to create menus. Um, you can put your content in. You'd get rid of the death by scrolling concept. Um, and so those labels and buttons that I have uh, circled, that's a, a little piece of code that's within a label that allows us, in this case, to have um, the, the brand compliant colours, that, that soft pink and the, the red and the orange. But instructionally, they just allowed us to clean up the screen quite a lot. So those buttons, the red button just points to a book. And so the students don't actually see the book um, kind of as, as a tool directly. They just get pointed to it. So it, it just cleaned up the interface a little bit. Um, we also used forums, and there's a forum that's circled with the orange button. And then we also used folders because there was lots of templates, lots of readings, lots of other guides. Again, these were existing assets, so we saved a whole heap of course development time. So we just put them there each week, and then they were um, talked through in the face-to-face -face, um, lessons and online. And then we used some H5P um, quizzes as well. So the Moodle book, um, basically it held a whole heap of text content, images and infographics, web links, templates, PDF readings. Um, there were topic intro videos. We had 12 of those uh, with, with a caption, uh, as well as YouTube videos and a, a quiz. I'll just see how much time I've got left, okay. Um, we wanted to use, and we did use, Moodle Forum. We had a forum for every single one of the topics, so, or every one of the single weeks. And so 
we would send the students off on a little treasure hunt or, you know, what's your favourite app type thing, and then they'd come back and just random stuff that, that was then incorporated into um, other um, Zoom, Zoom sessions and other, other kind of um, activities. Uh, the, the, the tutor established her expectation with using the forums so that we found that the students just got into the swing of it pretty early. Uh, we had very clear and concise instructions that I uh, worked with Kate to develop and we, we made the forum activities very brief and so uh, at, significantly they allowed more of a um, student voice and student perspective to be um, part of the course. Uh, we, we had video conferences, so 12 guest lecturers, so we had a lot of um, Zoom video sessions, one pretty much every week, which is a lot, and they went for about an hour and a half. So there's a quite a lot of content communicated through that mechanism. Um, now, the, we have course coordinators. Their support is, is crucial to the whole thing, the whole machine um, turning over and, and delivering the course effectively. Um, part of the development required a degree of tutor professional development, not anything fancy, it was just how to, what, what's, what is Moodle even? Um, what, uh, how, how can it be used? What are the protocols? Uh, what do you need to do? What do I need to do? That was in the development phase, but then in the delivery phase, there's a whole heap of other issues like um, pedagogy, protocols, relationship to the face-to-face, -face, what order or sequence of events, and then with the Zoom videos, even something like how do you share the screen? Should you wear a headset? Um, how, do you, how do you kind of um, modify your microphone settings if you need to? So this is my final slide. Um, so this is some student feedback. I found the information extremely valuable. I have been interviewing for positions and have used what I've learnt in this course to demonstrate my enhanced knowledge of digital production. I'm happy to say that I've been offered and accepted a job and offer and plan to use the digital producer toolkit and resources I have obtained from this course in my new role. So that's really good for us as the team because that's a measure of our success because these sort of courses, which are industry certificates, um, we want to see students actually using the material in, in the field. And so I think I might end there I've got my little two minutes, uh, two minute. I should say I've got, if you need more information about the curriculum, the course outline, that sort of thing, I've got um, these handouts. So come and see me later. Um, I think I've run out of things to say, but I'm happy to answer um, any questions if people have them. That's, um, that's a good question. I did have in one of my bullet points, I think I skipped over it, they were not, they non-accessible. And so that's, that's sort of what I was implying with the teacher expectation. Our tutor um, communicated to the students that the forums were important because of these various reasons, but we didn't assign a score. It wasn't like, um, you know, they were not compulsory which is why it was really pleasing that we saw that the students were getting into the swing of it because they enjoyed sharing, um, sharing their knowledge. They, 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 there was a few high achievers in the group as well, so they enjoyed kind of showing stuff to impress the other students, which is great, you know? So we had a, a really functional dynamic, but no, no accessible um, aspect. Thanks. And I've got a couple of questions around the, the Zoom. How big a group Oh yeah, good question. There was n uh, nine, nine students, very small class sizes. Yep, and in terms of the, um, the way that the, the webinar ran, was it about content delivery? Was yep. it, did you use any other functionality? When, when I first came on board, there was a concept of blasting knowledge out to the group, 
And so I um, had some uh, meaningful conversations with the subject matter expert and we designed it so it had a structure of a little bit of blasting content out to learners, but then a little bit of, excuse me, a little bit of um, engaging what they'd posted in the forums. And so we structured it. Um, so yeah, definitely this interactive um, component. And then we kind of, that was developed and enhanced over the weeks, because um, an hour and a half is a very long time. And that, they, they were recorded as well, so students could view the recording later. Okay. Excellent. I think we have time for one more question before the transition. Hi. Um, you mentioned that you used an iterative process. Was that made easier because you were working with a digital producer who's probably used to that kind of style? And um, would you go about it differently with, say, like a humanity specialist or something like that? Now that I think about it, yeah, I think it was already inbuilt into Kate's processes. She understood that as a, as a thing, whereas other, other kind of courses I've developed, that's become a big obstacle because they, the person just thinks you're doing a half-baked job to begin with and you're trying to, to kind of convince them, no, 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 this is an iterative approach. We'll kind of do this 15 times and they still think that you're being even more erratic and not professional. So I guess, yeah, that the whole um, concept and that approach was never an issue because we, we both understood it um, as a, that this is just the way things develop in a digital space. Because I guess one of the things with the awards courses and with traditional filmmaking, pre-production, production, post-production, post -production, those, that workflow just simply doesn't work in a digital realm, as you probably know. And so, um, yeah, it's a bit of a, I'll incorporate this into some of the future professional development, this kind of iterative approach. Thanks. Is there one more quick question? We have a little bit of time. Uh, you mentioned uh, machine translation of for the intro videos. What did you use and how accurate was it? Um, Kaltura. Kaltura has a plug-in or something. Angus, are you here? <laughs> there he is! So if you engage with Kaltura, you can have Reach free. So that's a text translation through Kaltura. Thank you. Yeah, but it was, um, it was reasonably accurate. And I mean, I guess because it was at such a long amount of time, um, it was accurate enough, I suppose, but I mean, I, I've kind of been watching machine trend, uh, captioning over the last 10 years and it's, it really picks up on the Australian accent um, remarkably well. So, Kaltura. A K. K for Kaltura. <laughs> Any other? I think I, we might wrap it up. Excellent. So thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. And um, I'm sure there's more questions coming up. Yeah, thank you.